So that works fine. Yeah. You can walk around if you've got an issue. Oh, that yeah, so you have to put from the back. Yeah. These are like this. Yeah. And if you put this in your pocket, that would be great. It's already yeah. working. Ah, no. Yes. All right. Welcome, everyone. In this session, we have four invited speakers. The first speaker is Andre Lazi, and he will be talking about science opportunities at SESAM. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for inviting me and for having me here to speak about it's working, yeah? Also, if I move. So, uh, I will try to introduce you to this facility which is located in the Middle East, which is SESAMI, Synchrotron Light for Experimental Science and Applications in the Middle East. So this is the building. And just to remember you, this is a synchrotron radiation uh, facility, a synchrotron light facility. Synchrotron light was first observed uh, some 76 years ago. So last year we celebrated 75 years of synchrotron light. Uh, and at that time, this light, which was seen in a tabletop synchrotron in New York, just because the uh, vacuum chamber, as was customary at that time, was made in glass, uh, was seen as burst of light, uh, at the time generated only 20 lines letter in a journal. Nowadays, uh, the situation is completely different. There are some 50 uh, facilities all over the world uh, uh, producing synchrotron light, which is used by a extremely wide community of users, of scientists. And uh, uh, so this is the largest in the world. And as you can see, these facilities are essentially clustered in uh, uh, three regions, in uh, North America, Europe, and the Far East, with very few exceptions, uh, Australia, Brazil, India, Singapore, and one facility in the Middle East, uh, which is uh, uh, in Jordan. So uh, why the, the reason of success of these, of, of these facilities uh, are manifold, uh, which go and go from uh, uh, the fact that uh, it is essentially very controllable, very intense light. So if you want to summarize or to bring it to the minimum, to the bare minimum, it is because it is extremely brilliant and a very high, a very wide spectrum. So the fact that uh, the charge is moving at the speed of light uh, produces a ultra relativistic Doppler, uh, Doppler effect, which concentrates the, the uh, emitted uh, <laughs> light in the forward, the, di forward, the direction, which makes it an extremely brilliant source. Uh, so it will makes it easier to bring a lot of power in a very tiny spot on the sample and it covers a very very wide spectrum of energies 
So the history of these facilities is, uh, can be uh, subdivided into many phases uh, in which uh, um, technical developments on the machine itself, so on the accelerator or on the uh, magnetic structures, uh, so uh, we go from uh, a, a first generation, which is the uh, use of a parasitic use of of, uh, of, uh, of accelerators made to be a collider, to a second generation in which uh, the, 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 the ring itself, the uh, the accelerator itself, was optimized for the production of light, uh, to a third generation in which uh, fancy magnetic structure started to be used in order to, to increase the brilliance uh, to a fourth generation which is which is the uh, the, the, the the present one in which again the, the lattice of the magnets in the machine have been modified in order to increase the brilliance so generation after generation uh, we gained orders of magnitude in brilliance and uh, uh, developed more and more kind of of of, uh, of ways of using this 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 uh, uh, the the radiation about the wide spectrum this goes from infrared up to all the way up to x-rays uh, and by changing the wavelength you obviously change the way the light interacts with matter so you can get very many different kind of experiments uh, performed uh, and gain uh, different insights on matter. So all facilities are uh, made in this way. There is an injection system which produces the charges which are then transferred to a main ring which is used as a storage ring to keep the electric charges, the electrons, in, in orbit for as long as possible because uh, that is the light bulb and we want the light bulb to be, to be to be as stable as possible and during these, uh, uh, this uh, this uh, uh, trip at the speed of light in the in the storage ring uh, they will the the the, the, the power uh, depleted in emitting radiation is uh, re uh, re-given to the to the charges through a a, a cavity to a, 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 a to a radio frequency cavity and at each and every zig and zag and uh, um, bend of the magnetic systems, uh, there will be a, uh, a, a beam line uh, which is uh, utilizing the radiation emitted. Okay, so the different uh, effects, the different uh, interfaces interferences with the sample will generate different kind of beam lines uh, around it so this is a sort of zoology which I, I have taken from taking pictures from different uh, uh, from different uh, facilities around the world but essentially they all looked they all look the same that is very different from one one from the other so if you go around one synchrotron you will find very many different beam lines utilizing different wavelengths and uh, so and in some cases they will resemble very closely the correspondent uh, laboratory instruments in the case of infrared for example is exactly the same or uh, a larger versions uh, for diffraction or, uh, or uh, something that you really don't find in laboratories like XFs, uh, uh, so it's ray absorption spectroscopies, uh, because you don't have the uh, flexibility enough in energies to use that in laboratories. So, because of this wide spectrum of uh, uh, possibilities, uh, the uh, synchrotron radiations are facilities are frequented by very many different kinds of researchers. Uh, from chemistry, engineering, life sciences, cultural heritage, uh, uh, and many more, and material sciences. So it is an object which is essentially born in a physics environment uh, and open itself to the world of any kind of research. 
and anybody can access these kind of instruments uh, they all work in the same way there is uh, there, there are proposals goals uh, one once or twice or twice a year and a panel an external panel will rank the proposals and beam time will be allocated to the best ones until there is beam time available so as you can you can imagine inside each synchrotron there will be a community of users interacting and cross fertilizing each other not only that also synchrotron radiation facilities themselves form a community or several of them and this is an example the uh, the leaves uh, the league of european accelerator based photon sources uh, which is a community of free electron lasers and synchrotron radiation sources in europe to which sesame is uh, the first associate member the history of sesame sesame is a uh, the idea of sesame, the, ve the very first idea actually is even out of this uh, cartoon, is, uh, is some uh, suggestion which came from Abdul Salam, the uh, director of the uh, uh, Center for Theoretical Physics in Trieste, which now has its, his name, who said that uh, if a singleton radiation facility would be the perfect uh, uh, facility to collect interest from many countries in the Middle East. And this idea was then taken over by Sergio Fubini, a um, uh, Italian scientist at CERN of Jewish origin who had a lot of friends in the Arab world. And so he, at the end, in, at the beginning of the 90s, he had uh, the, he succeeded in putting together in the same room uh, Israeli scientist and Egyptian scientist and started the process which coalesced uh, at the end uh, into Sesame with a lot of help also from Havik Shopper at that time the, uh, the director general of CERN and uh, uh, so uh, who also inaugurated the tradition that the uh, president of the Council of Sesame is always a former DG of, of, of CERN. But everything stayed uh, as uh, on paper for many years until these two gentlemen on the, on the, uh, on the right, Gustav Foss and Hermann Winnick, uh, came up with the idea that since Berlin was uh, dismantling the, 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 uh, the, the Bessie machine that would have been a chance to put it on a boat and bring it to the Middle East, to remount it, and hey, hope at zero cost you would have a single turn in the Middle East. And that was uh, a horrible idea. And, but it was extremely was fundamental to proceed because at that point there was something on the table something physical on the table to discuss with. And so the idea was accepted and Sesame actually started. And the, uh, so Sesame at that point in 2002, to, between 2002 and 2003 became a reality, a, a statute which is deposited at, at UNESCO. It has its members, so Pakistan, Iran, Turkey, Palestine, uh, Israel, Jordan, Egypt uh, and Cyprus, uh, and copying the same structure at CERN, not only uh, observers, but not only members, but also observers, with the difference that uh, the, the, the observers of uh, Sesame are many more than in CERN and they are worldwide located. So they cover more or less the entire globe. And the role of this observer has been fundamental. So start, obviously there is here at the center of this cartoon, there is the, the boat uh, leaving the harbor of Hamburg uh, with, uh, with Bessie one on board, but also several beam lines, equipment, uh, the, 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 the funding for the guest house for the users uh, and of extreme importance, the solar power plant that makes of uh, Sesame, the only accelerator in the world which is fully 
uh, uh, supplied by solar energy uh, a, a reality. So the first thing, the f so at that point, 2003, 2004, it was possible to gather together the Council of Sesame and the first act of the Council of Sesame it was to, okay, we forget about Bessie One and we build a new machine. And this is, uh, so uh, of Bessie One, the, uh, uh, the injector was maintained, but the main ring uh, where actually the production of X-rays happens uh, has been substituted uh, by a completely new ring, so it's, uh, which, is, which makes of uh, Sesame an up-to-date machine. So it's a third-generation light source with 2.5 giga electron volts and 133 meters in circumference. It has been designed by Dieter Einfeld, who is, by the way, also the father of the fourth generation of singleton radiation. So it is a uh, fairly small machine so it is uh, uh, with 133 meter in circumference it is in the on the small uh, uh, part of the graph of old synchrotrons but it is the best machine that you can make with such a, a small footprint and uh, uh, it has also the highest possible ratio between uh, uh, straight sections and bending magnets which allows you to put a lot of uh, insertion devices, so magnetic structure which allow you to tailor the radiation uh, to the needs of the, uh, of the beam line. So these are the parameters of the machine, and these are the three insertion devices at, the, at this, in this moment already available. So this is a picture with all the sources of sesame. We receive uh, we use bending magnets, a multiple wiggler, a triple wiggler, and an undulator to produce uh, the radiation used by the beam lines. And this is the list of beam lines uh, already available. So uh, in green, there are the ones which are already open. So light green is because they are open now for the first time. And one beam line which is under construction. We will return on it on this later. So, with five beam lines, uh, Sesame is definitely a facility open to the world. So, starting with the, let us let, let me just go through the various beam lines uh, quickly. So, the first beam line is on bending magnet number two. It's an infrared beam line. Uh, so, we, it uses the spectroscopy of the vibrations in order to get uh, in, in insight on the chemistry of the samples. What you gain uh, with infrared uh, at the synchrotron instead of in the laboratory is that thanks to the much, much higher brilliance, you can go to a uh, very, uh, to much smaller spot size without losing signal to noise. And uh, uh, so you see here, for example, the difference of uh, uh, 1000 scans uh, at, uh, with, a, with, with a global source with respect to what you can get uh, with just a few scans uh, with a synchrotron at a uh, six by six micron squared uh, aperture of the, of the microscope. The first paper which came out was published in 2020. So the beamline was opened in 2018. And uh, uh, this is the 31st paper which came out. It's a Jordan group uh, uh, looking for a diagnostic tool for preeclampsia. So uh, looking at the chemistry of the modification in the chemistry of placenta samples uh, in uh, um, yeah. With and, with and without this uh, disease, which is a eclampsia, preeclampsia is uh, a, an endemic uh, disease which is particularly difficult to be diagnosed. Uh, medical doctors call it the, uh, the, um, the disease of a thousand and one uh, diagnosis. And the same game can be also repeated on ancient samples. So this is trying to understand uh, the uh, disease in the uh, um, skin of this mummy, which is uh, Cabeza aegyptica, is 
uh, in a museum in Spain. Second beam line is again on a bending magnet, the XFs XRF, so the X ray absorption, X ray fluorescence beam line. With the principal beam line scientist is uh, Algerian Mesut Afush, and uh, he's uh, uh, now uh, helped by with uh, Latifula Khan. Uh, and you can do many kind of absorption spectroscopies uh, in the near future also uh, photoluminescence uh, x-ray photoluminescence uh, will be available we just installed the uh, the the setup so not at this call but uh, in six months from now with the next call that all that that, that will, will also be available and here this is obviously very beneficial to have the possibility to change the energy because you can do uh, you can tune your experiment to the kind of, of atoms that you have in in the sample so it makes uh, life much easier also already for uh, fluorescence measurements uh, but also allows you to implement uh, uh, exafs measurements uh, because you can change continuously the energy and from the oscillation of the absorption factor you can get an insight on the uh, on the molecular structure around the emitter. The uh, fluorescence is also helped by this uh, fluorescence detector, which was a gift from INFN in Italy, which is practically the most advanced that you can find on any beamline in the world. And the very first paper coming out, also, also this beamline was open in 2018. In 2019, was this, this was the first paper coming out from a uh, Turkish group. Uh, uh, so on the uh, production, so on, 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 the, on a test of several catalysts for uh, syn gas from glycerol. Then there are the three newer beamlines, the beamlines produced, which use insertion devices uh, to the, uh, on the ID09, ID10, and ID11. So ID09, uh, principal beamline scientist is Mahmoud Abdelatif, uh, together with Philip Hans. Uh, it's the powder diffraction beamline. This is a donation from uh, um, the sweet light source which packed and sent to, uh, to Jordan the entire Wigler-based beamline for material science. So this is why we have this name, material science X-ray powder diffraction. And this was practically finished uh, when I arrived uh, in Sesame on the uh, early, to, 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 early to, to, to 2020 and then uh, uh, COVID hit. And so the, the final touches required many more months than one could have expected. Also at that time, it was not possible to send two person at the same time in the tiny space of, a, of, a, of an experimental hatch. So, so the motor guy has to go first, then go out, then you can send the control guy and then he has to come out. So it, it has been the, the, uh, the, 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 the setup was quite complicated, but uh, it finally went well, and uh, it was possible to uh, start measuring. Obviously, only uh, Jordanian uh, users could come at that point because Jordan closed completely itself because of the pandemic. It was no, no planes coming, no planes leaving. Uh, and uh, uh, so the, this Jordan uh, uh, group of the Jordan Royal Society uh, which is uh, exploring many different kinds of uh, metal-organic frameworks for different uh, purposes, first came and uh, measured uh, the, uh, at different temperatures the uh, absorption of uh, CO2 in uh, this metal-organic framework. Well, the, what you gain with, for in powder diffraction from, uh, uh, from using a synchrotron, and in particular a uh, Wiggler, uh, based beamline in a synchrotron is that first of all you have a very parallel beam and this gives you geometrically well separated peaks when you scan the the angle this is one ad, one big, big big advantage and the second the fact that you have a very 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 strong intensity in the 
in the in the X-ray beam, and since uh, the uh, the geometry of uh, of uh, uh, powder diffraction sends photons in all directions, this is much better. Okay, so uh, the almost future, which is already reality, uh, beats the uh, ID10 is uh, a European project which has just ended. Uh, it was started in 2019 and uh, we closed it in on the 30th of June uh, this year. It's a project uh, funded by by EU for the design and the installation of a new model beamline photomography in Sesame. So the the uh, the it's uh, the project has essentially three pillars. Uh, one is actually the construction of the beamline, but the second is that this design of the construction has to be reused also by, uh, by Europe. So, and in fact, uh, the source, which is just this uh, triple wiggler, is already being used for uh, the uh, um, forthcoming beamline photomography at the Polish uh, synchrotron. Solaris, so which is one of the partner of of the project, and the third is the construction of a community of users for such a device. Uh, obviously, being a uh, imaging system, it has a lot of different applications. So it can be applied in archaeology in uh, uh, health sciences, uh, material sciences, and eventually also services for industrial uh, applications or uh, environmental studies. And this that you see here is the very first uh, uh, image that was uh, taken at the beamline in May this year. So. The, same, the very same day in which the system was switched on. And this is a, a, a very big success. So this is a, an image of this vial of uh, tiny glass spheres uh, taken in 12 seconds uh, by rotating the, the sample in front of the detector. So obviously in uh, imaging in, in a hospital, what you do is move the uh, the detector and the uh, and the source around the patient. Uh, here you cannot do that. You do it. The, you do the opposite. So the manipulator will rotate the sample between the source and the detector, which are fixed in the laboratory frame. And so this in the in the following days, uh, practically everything that was passing nearby the laboratory was measured so this is a sample of a uh, of a um, um, archaeological sample collected in the streets or so everywhere you step in jordan you will find something on the ground which uh, which has a few thousand years or an akaba crist an akaba coral or a foam of aluminum brought from by a friend to, to Jordan, or a, um, a, a dental implant, uh, or again uh, um, a, 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 the inner structure of a, 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 a superconducting wire. The beamline is open now for the first time, so the proposals can be placed until mid-September for measurements in the first six months of next year. So it is just inaugurated. The same happens for HEZEB. HEZEB is a donation from five Helmholtz institutes to Sesame. Again, the project has also the uh, purpose to develop the community around the beamline and uh, the, uh, the, the the project leader is uh, Wolfgang Eberhardt and uh, in uh, in Sesame is uh, Mustafa Fatih Genzel who is the principal beamline scientist the beamline is completed 
these are the, uh, the the parameters so it is it has a uh, delta e over e of around 10,000 which is good and uh, a the, the a wide energy range between uh, 100 and 100 and uh, 1600 electron volts and it has a very simple experimental chamber so it does not do photo emission spectroscopy but uh, all it stays in photon in photon out measurements uh, in which you uh, you can bring the sample in front of the in front of the beam uh, with a manipulator which has a precision of five microns okay so nearby this beam line what is coming up is a uh, the first national beam line from one of the members so Turkey is placing a new beam line which will be actually the very first beam line built in the Middle East and uh, uh, we expect it to be ready for users in 2025 these are the uh, a few statistics on the uh, kind of uh, uh, proposals and uh, a uh, little report on how we so, so we are open since uh, uh, merely four years and uh, the fact that we have 75 practically almost 75 papers already out uh, with Any question? Thank you for the very nice talk. Um, so I understand the, the bumpy, let's say, recent history, especially after the, uh, after the COVID. Uh, but my understanding is that all these um, synchrotron radiation centers are quite busy, right? That it's not all that trivial to get the, the time. I'm talking about the, the pre-COVID, uh, right? Uh, is that the case? I mean, yeah, and what is what is the reason? Is it is it that, that it's such a high industry demand for this? And what do you expect uh, from Sesame in that that respect? Uh, what we have now is a uh, overbooking of a factor two, which is, in my opinion, quite healthy, because allows us to uh, select the best proposals out of the uh, the number that uh, that are, arrive. But also, it's not too discouraging for the users who are not accepted, because you receive the, the report from the uh, from the panel, and if you read it carefully, you will have, like in a paper, the way to rewrite it and uh, rearrange it in such a way that the next time or the following next time, uh, you will be allowed to have. So it's uh, it's a healthy number. Too. 
Uh, thank you very much for the very nice talk. So, uh, as you may know, I mean, the European Physical Society strongly supports the CISAMI infrastructure. We have an observer in the person of Petra Rudolf, who was my predecessor. As far as I can remember, one of 